So if you've been paying attention, we've been covering a lot of emulation style things on this channel, whether it's mini PCs, plug and play hard drives, handheld devices, but one area I haven't quite cracked yet is the console side of things. You probably always see these consoles pop up on Amazon with a bunch of retro games on them and a simple plug and play mechanic. Well, Ken Hank sent me over the Super Console X4, a new console plug and play system that has a bunch of retro games on it at a pretty affordable price. So I want to take a look at this system with you guys today, unbox it, show you guys the performance, and then see if this is something you'll want to pick up. I'll have a link in the description box down below if we like the system and maybe you'll like it. So without any further ado though, let's check out this system, see what it's all about, and come to some conclusions about it. All right, so here is our super console because it is indeed a super console. Come to us from Kin Hank. You might remember we reviewed this portable HDD drive from them that I actually really like. I use it for a lot of videos, testing mini PCs and whatnot. So I'm hopeful for this system. It comes with the game console, an SD card, HDMI cable, controller, power cable, you know, your standard stuff here. Now let's go ahead and open this bad boy up and see what everything looks like, how everything is presented. Um, so we have these controllers here. Obviously, we have some instructions. Um, a lot, of, a lot of Chinese on here. Oh, wait, we're good. We are good. But these controllers are easy to set up. They come with a little dongle that you just plug in via USB connection. I'll open this up here, and it'll pop out. Throw in some batteries, and you are good to go. The controllers feel, like, fine. You know, I actually didn't use the controllers for this video. I just used an Xbox 360 controller. Um, I did, after filming this video, check out the controller just sort of running with the system, and everything seemed okay maybe a little bit more input lag because it is a wireless controller but if you have an xbox 360 controller you know that's fine i don't feel like we're buying it for the controllers we're buying it for this now this is our system i could sit here and tell you about specifications but specifications honestly don't really mean anything i have some devices that are much stronger than other devices and things don't run as well and don't look as well and don't play as well so i'm not really of the mindset where that sort of stuff really matters. Like, yeah, it gives you a baseline test, but in reality, it's like, it, it just depends on how we're operating. So we have some USB plugs on here. It's honestly not a bad design. Like it's, it's pretty small. We have our ethernet slot, USB slot, HDMI slot here on the back, our power slot. Like I do like the, the design of the system, you know, the flame thing, uh, it's kind of early two thousands, but I mean, it works here comes with a power converter, of course, as well. You just plug it into the wall. We have a remote control because you do multimedia features, which I'm not interested in and we have our hdmi cable thank god now i only have a thousand and two of these here is our user manual honestly this is a pretty simple setup like you, you plug it in it turns on it boots up and then you play games so you can tinker with settings which we'll see as the video progresses but honestly you know not bad at the price point we're coming in at here like it, it seems pretty decent to me you can add games to it as well so now we have to turn it on, see the system in action, and that's where we'll really get to the nitty gritty. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so here's the interface of the Super Console X4. We have nearly 100,000 games, and we're gonna go through every one of those and play every single game because daddy needs that sweet, sweet ad revenue. I'm just kidding, I wouldn't do that. I couldn't even do that to myself. Could you imagine playing like nearly 100,000 games for one video, or just in your entire life? But yeah, so looking at the lineup of games here, um, honestly, you know, system-wise, I was pleasantly surprised. It has pretty much Dreamcast and everything backwards from that, which, you know, I wasn't expecting PlayStation 2, GameCube, Xbox stuff on a $130 plug-and-play device like the Super Console X4 is, but... You know a good amount of stuff here we got all our nintendo systems we got various nintendo handhelds some 3do a thomas wave all of the goodness that is known as sega because sega is great and i miss them dreamcast saturn our sony stuff is coming up too so i was definitely pleasantly surprised with the amount 
of various systems that are on this that we will have access to various games from the build list that i looked through they all looked relatively clean like i didn't see a whole hell of a lot of duplicates or weird stuff although there was one thing that we'll talk about when we get to it but you have your basic scraping mechanics of where it's like a screenshot of the game some basic information yada yada you know the the basic stuff you see with a lot of these devices but you know it works it, it's clean enough it works I want to check out a game though you, you know we got to check out games running on this device you're gonna get a little bit of a preview of well a lot of the main games here but I want a specific game a specific game that begins with a W can you guess what it is in the comment section down below before we get there I bet you probably can because I talk about it quite a bit it is of course the greatest main game ever WrestleFest because everybody needs to play WrestleFest all right, so here is WWF WrestleFest, a game that will probably never get a re-release. And, you know, it's running good. It's running exactly like it should. It looks as it should. It sounds as it should. Much better than that weird PlayStation Vita Switch handheld thing that we looked at. But, yeah, so MAME seemed to work well. Um, I played some Ninja Turtles on here, too. It seemed to work fine. So, obviously, some games are probably going to be problematic for this system. But, yeah, WrestleFest worked good. Turtles worked good. So, it seems like we're off to a good start but then we run into some problems here and this is going to be a bit of a diatribe from me i hate scan lines in games i'm playing some nes here and i hate scan lines in games and in order to get rid of the scan lines we're kind of having to go into the back end of the system into the different options that the system has the different menu options which I get it. It's nice to have all of those options because you can tinker with a lot of things. But I spent a ton of time tinkering with this back end in order to get rid of the scan lines. And I know my way around these systems by now because they're all pretty similar. They're all pretty much built on RetroArch. But trying to figure out how to make the image look good took me forever. It took me forever. And it kind of hurts the plug and play ability of the system in my opinion because i feel like a lot of people that would buy this they don't care about scan lines okay scan lines is probably the most overrated thing in retro game emulation because wow it kind of looks like a crappy old crt tv okay i want things to look good so now here's all the different video filters that i'm scrolling through to try and find something that suits my needs and looks good like i don't know man it was frustrating to try and figure out how to make the image look like I feel like 90% of people that will buy this device would want it to look like. Eventually, I got this, which you could tell the color palette's a little bit different, but at least there's no scan lines on here. At least it looks nice and clean. So, you know, running-wise, everything was fine. It was just trying to adjust it to my liking. Super Nintendo, same story. I had to adjust a million different things, get rid of scan lines. This is what I came up with. I think it looks good enough. And once again, you know, the games themselves seem to be running fine. Everything that I tested out it looked and played and sounded as it should. So that was good, but I just didn't like having to adjust all these different options to make a non-scan line thing. I think by default, it should be non-scan line because I feel like the scan line audience is much smaller than just the, hey, clean image thing. Because if that wasn't the case, the NES Mini and the SNES Mini wouldn't have been so damn popular. But it is what it is. The games themselves ran fine. All right, next we're going to take a look at some 3DO with Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo, probably the best game on the 3DO, let's be real. I'm not quite sure how I felt about this. I didn't know how performance would be on this, but it seemed okay, but this could just be my memory. I'm choosing the the highest turbo setting here, and when I'm playing the game, the sound effects are, are fine, but the music seems a little bit slower than it normally is, or maybe it seems like the generic speed of the music, and I felt like in, in the actual game, the music speeds up. I could be wrong. Gameplay-wise, everything was fine with this. It, it was surprisingly snappy, but... I just noticed the music, and you let me know in the comments section down below. I'm not going to harp on it too much or negate and say it's a bad thing because it could just be me misremembering. But, yeah, this game ran fine, and then I tried to play Need for Speed, and this popped up. What the hell is this? This is not the Need for Speed on 3DO. So we have some issues with some games, and if it's an issue with one game, the 3DO list wasn't big at all, so that, that's kind of a little bit concerning. Let's take a look at some 32X, and look at this. No scan lines. 
this is default settings me just turning on 32x playing some 32x no scan lines so once again now we don't have consistently since see some systems have scan lines some systems don't by default and it's like i, I don't get it but surprisingly my 32x experience was freaking phenomenal on this i would probably use this device just to play 32x games in my room because this is running great. It looks great. It sounds great. It plays great. I'm a huge fan of the 32X library. So pleasantly surprised with this. Here's a little Knuckles Chaotix. And once again, everything looks really good. Everything sounds really good. So this was kind of a surprise to me. This was something I was like, okay, well, I didn't necessarily expect this. I expected it to be, you know, scan line crap and stuff like that. But hey, you know what? Pleasantly surprised. How does that set up for the rest of the systems? Will I be pleasantly surprised again? Well, technically, yes, I was, because here's some Sega Saturn stuff. Once again, the Sega Saturn library is pretty small, and admittedly, I did have to set up my controller. I did not use the controllers that came with this. I'm using an Xbox 360 controller, so I had to set up the controls with this. It wasn't a hard thing to do or anything, but this is Mortal Kombat Trilogy, and it, it's running really well. Like I said, a small selection of Sega Saturn games. Definitely, I would like to see more, but here's Panzer Dragoon. Like, it's running good. It looks good. It sounds good. There's even like a little bit of upscaling with it. It's at default two times the resolution and I'm not noticing like any performance hiccups. So yeah, Sega Saturn of all things is running good on this system. So now I'm like, well, okay, now we're back in business. Now things are going to get really good because Sega Saturn is notoriously harder to emulate than PlayStation 1, right? Right? I, I'm setting up a little bit of foreshadowing if you did not pick up on that because PlayStation 1, surprisingly, was crap. Like, I, um, this is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 3. They turned off the music to make the performance better. However, the performance is not better. And it, it, it's very slow. It's very sluggish. Obviously, the PS1 version of this game, you know, it wasn't a crown jewel of the system or anything like that. But it plays better than this normally. You get better performance than you get normally. And the lack of music, it's like... Bro, it's a Tony Hawk game. And here's a weird thing. I went into a menu and I got this really loud, obnoxious sound. Headphone warning, if you have headphones on, if I had to listen to it, you do too. All right, and here's Tekken 3 running very, very bad. Um, I don't know what happened with PlayStation 1 on this device. I wouldn't recommend it for PlayStation 1 games. Um, everything I tried was just not a pleasant experience. So now we're moving on to N64 and... You know, we'll check out one of the harder games to emulate. Cruise on, yeah, yeah, the USA. And, yeah, we have some problems. You can see the trees are flickering all over the place. We've got slowdown. We've got audio clipping. So now I'm like, okay, well, N64 is going to be problematic. And this is a, a, a challenging game for the N64 to emulate for whatever reason. I would love to know the story because this is a very early release for the system. So, like, why would that be hard? I would think later on releases would be tougher as like you see with most normal systems. But yeah, Cruise in USA is notoriously a, a troublesome game for N64 emulation on cheaper devices. And this system, you know, it's a pretty cheaper low end device. So, but here was the kicker. I tried WCW NWO Revenge. I have upscaled textures and perfect performance. Perfect. And widescreen is enabled. So I didn't do anything. I didn't adjust anything. I didn't change anything. I simply chose the game and they're like, hey, here's here's widescreen. Here's really good performance and some upscale textures and it's staying. So I, I don't get it. I don't get the inconsistencies of this thing where things um, I assume wouldn't work well kind of work decent and then things change and some things have scan lines and some things don't have scan lines like be a little bit more consistent across the board. Now we're going to take a look at our final system with Dreamcast. It's not a good experience. Like, there's some choppiness with the audio. The game isn't running at full speed. And you'll see it with our final game that we're going to take a look at, which is Crazy Taxi. There's audio clipping all over the place and performance issues. So what do I think about the Super Console X4? Um, I think that when it works it actually is pretty decent like sega saturn surprisingly is 
good. Maim seems to be pretty decent, and 32X was, was really good as well. Very good experiences, but there are other experiences that should be fine, like your NES stuff, that I, I just feel like, you know, the, the automatic scan lines and the, the weird filters and stuff like that, the fact that PS1 has so many performance issues, like, it's a good enough build with emulators and games on it to where if they could get the hardware to be a little bit stronger or optimized more, this would be awesome. But as it stands now, it's hard to recommend it in its current state. You know, you can do it if if you want some Saturn stuff and 32X stuff. Your lower end stuff is going to run decently enough, but, you know, anything PS1 and above, you're going to struggle with. So, yeah, let me give you guys my final thoughts. So this is kind of tough for me because, honestly... I don't hate the idea. I actually really love the idea. I, I think that more companies need to focus on things like this, the plug and play situation where you don't need a PC. I feel like that's a pretty decent market. And at the price point, I mean, the performance is all right. You know, 32X stuff running good, Sega Saturn stuff running good. I was a bit disappointed with PlayStation 1. Um, I was kind of surprised by that, honestly. But you might could use a different emulator and stuff that will make things better. I just feel like it's not exactly a plug and play solution because you do have to tinker with stuff. And the whole situation where it's like some systems have scan lines and some don't, that just drives me nuts because there's no rhyme or reason to it. Look at some Mortal Kombat here on the Super Nintendo. It has these god-awful fake scan lines, a CRT sort of filter on them. It, it doesn't look good to me. But then you play the Sega Genesis, and I adjusted nothing, and there's no stupid filters or anything. It just looks like a, a retro game should look on a modern display. I think the groundwork for this is pretty solid. And, and Ken Hank, if you guys want to work together and come up with like a perfect one of these systems, I'm more than willing to help you guys out and tell you guys what sort of features I feel that the community would like to see in this thing. Consistency and make sure that the games that are on it are performing up to snuff. Like I said, there's a lot of stuff that works great on here. There's some stuff that works great that you got to tinker with and some stuff is a little bit of a disappointment, but I don't necessarily hate it. I feel like a lot of people will be like, oh, you know, it's a piece of junk, but putting this in my bedroom to play some 32X or some Saturn or Sega Genesis stuff, like, I don't know, that's kind of nice and attractive considering I don't need to bring a mini PC up there. But let me know in the comment section down below what you feel about the Super Console X4. Like I said, I have a link in the description box if you want to pick one of these up. It is an affiliate link, so I will make a little bit of scratch off of it if you decide to do it. So I thank you for the support. Thank you to Ken Hank for sending this over. You know, I think the groundwork is there. We just need to work a little bit on some of the things that I mentioned in this video. And as always, guys, thank you guys for checking out this video. If you are new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Emulation King out. Later.